Welcome to Classroom 5.0, a podcast that uncovers industry insights, cutting-edge research and practical evidence-based strategies that help us all to imagine and design learning environments and pathways for this ever-evolving world so that together we can best support the next gen to uncover and deliver their unique potential. This episode has been recorded from our hometown of Port Macquarie, which we're grateful to share and enjoy alongside the traditional owners of Beer Pie Country, whose ongoing cultures and connections to lands and waters we celebrate, and whose elders, past, present and emerging, we pay our respect to. Hi, I'm Marianne Power, psychologist and co-founder of the Posify Group, and of course, your host for today's episode, which... I have to say, it's a little bit of a moment in time because I have been, look, I'm going to say Insta-stalking this woman for as long as I can remember. Lisa Messenger has 100% been a huge influence in my own entrepreneurial journey and experience, not just as a business person, but as a woman. And I know um, she has had the same impact for my co-founder and sister, Partner in Possibilities, Jenna, who can't be with us today, but I will be absolutely squealing offline. But anyway, enough about my fangirling. Let me introduce Lisa before we throw the microphone over. And I'm going to say that this, uh, this bio does deserve the glasses and a read through because uh, it's it's quite impressive. So get ready, get your cuppa. Lisa is the vibrant founder and CEO of the Messenger Group, as well as a founder and editor in chief of Collective Hub which is where you may have come across her previously. She launched Collective Hub as a print magazine back in 2013 with no experience. Can I repeat that? No experience in an industry that people said was either dead or dying. Well, they were wrong because despite that, her magazines have seen 54 issues and I may have every single copy distributed in 37 countries countries and featured the likes of Ryan Gosling, Sarah Jessica Parker, Jamie Oliver, Martha Stewart and George Clooney. Just a couple of household names on the covers. <laughs> Collective Hub has since grown into an international multimedia business and lifestyle platform with multiple verticals across print, digital events, and more recently co-working spaces. And we're about to dive into also Collective Hub for Kids, Woo-hoo! all of which are serving to ignite human potential. An award-winning author and speaker, Lisa has authored 36 books in the realms of positive psychology and business and traversed the globe, being invited to speak as an author authoritative voice on disruption, innovation, and startup flight by IBM, L'Oreal, Telstra, Facebook, C3 Church, Commonwealth Bank, CPA Australia. Need I go on? You can check out her profile. She's opened the Adelaide Fashion Festival, closed the Mercedes-Benz Sydney Fashion Week, and shared a stage with Sir Richard Branson five times. She's also lived a large and colorful life. And I was really curious about this, actually. We're going to dive into this, Lisa, a little bit later. She identifies as a seeker and has traversed the globe exploring different spiritual modalities, from crawling through sweat lodges, butt naked in Costa Rica, to spending weeks at a time at Ozho Meditation Resort in India, meditating in purple robes for up to 17 hours a day. Now that's something I'm keen to learn more about. Lisa's passion is to challenge individuals and corporations to change the way they think, take them out of their comfort zone and prove that there's more than just one way to do anything. She encourages entrepreneurial spirit, creativity and innovation and lives life to the absolute max. And if you don't believe me or anything I've just shared in this bio, go and check her out on every social media platform you can see because you will just see it for yourself. Of course, she's just released her new book, Startup to Scale Up, which I can't wait to talk about. It steps you through everything you need to set you up for success. What (laughs) is it like, Lisa Messenger, hearing your own bio back at you? Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It is amazing to be here. What is it like hearing my own bio? Oh, I, <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've done a bit, but um, yeah, bit. thank you for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're so welcome. I really could have gone on, but I'd rather hear your voice. And you're joining us from Austin, Texas, where you're over in the States at the moment. And I might have seen actually recently on your Insta that you were sharing, I can see in the background, you were sharing your very colorful Airbnb that you've sat in and, and noticing it's a little bit different to your usual whites and greens. 
<laughs> but I want to know more interestingly, you know, given we're all emerging out of a couple of years of disruption and lockdowns and having to shrink and being a seeker yourself, what's it been like or what's your process? What are you noticing as you emerge and get back to traveling and adventure and connecting and, and of course, your business? Well, thank you. And <clears throat> let me tell you, when I woke up at the beginning of 2022, Austin, Texas was not where I thought I would find myself. Really? No, not at all. It wasn't on the plan, not oh. one bit. Um, but it is fascinating and extraordinary. And I'm very clear on my purpose. And mm -hmm. each year, my partner and I set a very clear vision and intention for the following year. And this year was all about living in Byron Bay or more closely Bangalore, Bangalore. where we're renovating at the moment. Yeah. And, you know, geographically we had very different intentions. But uh, the universe works in mysterious ways and this opportunity came up, which is quite bizarre for both of our businesses simultaneously to kind of huh. move to the U.S. And wow. so there's no accidents, I don't think. And so um, he came first. He actually spent a month here um, in, I think it was January. I've lost all sense of time. And then, <laughs> uh, and then I was like, I'm not coming. And then these things kept happening. Opportunities kept opening up for Collective Hub to really grow in the U.S. And so mm. I jumped in, boots and all. And I can say boots and all because literally everyone wears boots here. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And here we find ourselves. Um, I'm a couple of weeks into Austin, Texas. And yeah, I'm happy to talk about all and every aspect of being here and the opportunities in the US because they are vast. And I'm actually really, really, really excited for this chapter now. That's incredible. I can't wait to dive into learning more about the States and what you're uncovering for business and opportunities. And I think that's so important, particularly sharing with our you know, fellow Australian entrepreneurs, but also our younger audience who are starting to think about, you know, well, where are the opportunities for them? But there's something that you said that I am just, I can't slip over. And it's speaking to that point of synchronicity and serendipity. Um, and going back to that idea of you as a seeker, you mentioned just now that these, that these moments in time kept popping up that you just couldn't ignore can you share a little bit about what that's like and has that always been a part for you as you've as, as you've sort of started to wave your way forward yeah I think so and I love you know positive psychology and everything kind of that you stand for as far as I know and I think for me I always say that I hold very tightly and clearly my purpose but then I'm mm. detached from the outcome and I kind of surrender now I know those two points are often counterintuitive in you know normal societal day-to-day -day life but I believe very strongly I mean my purpose is to ignite human potential and for mm. me being for entrepreneurs um, living my life out loud um, showing that anything's possible. So all of that comes with embracing opportunities and that's kind of my overarching thing. And so my partner, Stephen, and I are calling this the year of fluidity. We're just kind of being... Oh, I like that. <laughs> ...and going with it. So what happened for both of us um, was for me um, in 2013 when I launched the print magazine, which we've talked about, um, we were in the US, that was one of the 37 countries, and it grew fairly substantially over here. And in 2014, uh, less than 18 months after launching the magazine, I got this email from the office of Anna Wintour, and she wanted to meet with me in New York, and quite extraordinary things happened. In wow. 2015, I did a global rights deal with Simon & Schuster for my first book in the series, Daring and Disruptive. And it, so we kind of had been doing things in the U.S. for a while, but I think nothing really worked in any great way because I wasn't on the ground here. Mm. In November last year, um, there's an amazing brand in Canada called Indigo, and they have 176 stores, and they um, – placed an initial order they just said oh we'd love to stock your products and it was mm. just an inbound email which we all dream of you know um via our website and wow. that was um well over a hundred and well it was a hundred and thirty two thousand dollar initial order so wow. i was like okay people are kind of wanting and that was like a small initial test order and just yeah. a lot of things have started happening for us where more and more people from the US and Canada were starting to take notice of the brand and I think mm. we need to listen to those little signs mm. and 
it was actually Stephen's business initially that he's doing a, um, a capital raise, a round C capital raise, and he needed to show sort of proof of growth in the US. So that's so he was kind of the first instigator. And then I was like, hang on a minute, there's so many little voices and noises and yeah. validation and proof points um, for my brand in the US. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to jump in. And it's, it's so far going to be pretty extraordinary I think um but it's also which I can talk about it's, it's fascinating you know in Australia and thank you for all your kind words um I think my brand is relatively well known and you know Just a me, little bit <laughs> maybe I'm biased <laughs> but here and this has been the case for both Stephen and I it's quite beautiful because straight away you're completely humble like we have to be wow. totally humble because no one really knows who we are or cares and so it's actually beautiful you know it's back to cold calling and telling people about the brands and wow. you know doing and having a lot of coffees with people which for years mm. you probably for about 12 years actually I've said I don't do coffees like I do things very intentional and yes you know yes. I have time to have a lot of coffees or you know you'd end up having a lot of coffees but never getting anything done so everything's been stripped <laughs> away and that is beautiful and it's like a rebirthing and an ability to rebuild over here so it's yeah it's exciting wow Gosh, there's lots of points I want to, uh, yeah, just to clarify, I did put together a list of questions. They're all going to go out the window today, I can tell. There's so many points I want to pick up on there. One is the coffee thing. Let me let me car park that and come back to it because I think it's really relevant as well for those of us listening who are starting up our own business. Um, and I've got some thoughts. But coming back to those signposts, and look, I, I've got a particular lens on right now. I've just finished reading Dr. Lisa Miller's book, The Awakened Brain. Have you read that before? Have you read it yet? I haven't. Oh. I haven't. But I'm it going to send like, you a okay, link. I'm writing, Write right. it down. And it's off the back of also reading Dr. Tara Schwartz's book oh, a good 12 months ago, um, The Source. So both women have been looking at the neuroscience behind synchronicity, serendipity, and these signpost moments. And what you've just so beautifully described is this idea of, I mean, Dr. Lisa talks about the awakened brain and that bottom up of really recognizing, well, what is my central core and how am I navigating in the world and what impact am I wanting to have? But then starting to notice, okay, well, what's opening up along the way? And I remember one of the things not in your bio is a regional tour to Port Macquarie and sitting, <laughs> you know, in that beautiful space that Lisa and Chris have at Bill's Fish House and hearing you speak about, you know, putting putting your ideas and, and dreamings up on the whiteboard and, and using that to really work towards what it is you're wanting to create. And um, mm -hmm. it's so exciting to hear that you're both doing that over in the States. So, yeah, a little bit of background as to why I'm like, oh, digging, digging, digging go read those books but okay tell us a little bit about what you're uncovering with coffee dates now that's different to say 10 8 6 years ago or maybe similar that you'd forgotten yeah so i think what's really interesting is um you know different stages of life or different markets and things and in australia so I'm going to talk about it like this, which I have written about and talked about ad nauseum, but there's a lot of people out there who will just sort of say things like, and many people listening to this will relate, hi, mm. I hear you're the guru of, can I pick your brain over yeah. a coffee? And isn't that disgusting? And like who wants to have their brain picked? <laughs> really? Like yeah, and I'm a really big believer in energetic or value exchange. Yeah. And so... I really believe deeply in, you know, coffee is great, but it needs to be a two-way exchange. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I feel like we all walk away with, oh, my gosh, I just feel drained. Like mm. the person just pulled everything out of me and there was mm. no um, symbiotic or sharing or value exchange. So yeah. for many years, I've kind of, um, you know, if it's in a business sense, I've met with someone with an intention of this is what I want to get out of it. This is what they want to get out of it. Like, how can we collaborate? And sometimes that comes from we share a similar belief system, similar values, similar audiences, and let's have a coffee and explore. But yeah. coming at it from the notion of there is going to be a mutual value exchange. So mm. I've been very um, careful and protective and I've had a lot of boundaries and not negotiables over the years because time is in time is finite I was going to say yeah. infinite let's hope but time is finite so I believe we need to be protective of our time so mm -hmm. I've done less and less of that in Australia when I hang out with friends I just want to hang out with friends you know yeah. I want to have but when you move to 
a completely new country as I've done, a lot of that's fallen away. And I've found that I've had to ask people, you know, people that I trust, I've literally had to say, hi, who do you know in Austin who A, could be a great friend, you know, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, uh, you know who, who might share similar interests to me in terms of, you know, outdoors or gym or, you know, all sorts of things that I love and or, you know, who could be a great um, business connection that I could help and in turn they could help me. And I've had to be very specific around, you know, what I need help with over here. Mm-hmm. And then I've just been meeting with people. And it's quite beautiful because the crossover time, I mean, thank you. It's, I know it's 7 o'clock in Australia at the moment and it's 4 p.m. here. So the crossover time is really just from 4 p.m. in Austin time. So I am kind of have yeah. this luxury yeah. of time during the day to have coffees now. And then my Australian work day starts really at 4 p.m. So, wow. yeah, so I've been having a lot of coffees. And around that, I cache it very much with what – do I want because otherwise and I think this is an important lesson or how Mm. can I help that person so that we don't just go oh my god I love you this was amazing (laughs) (laughs) there's nothing else that ever comes from it so I I kind of am quite specific you know I'm, I'm over here to build my brand and to you know find distributors and connections and mm-hmm. is there anyone you know which sometimes in Australia now I'd feel a bit almost dirty saying oh help me like I try not to and I'm in a fortunate position that the brand is quite good that people often come to us and I don't have to do so much of that outward mm-hmm. facing but you know it's about letting go of any ego, being yeah. humble and asking for help really at the moment and, and being grateful for the people who are willing to, you know, have a coffee catch up. And people have just been so generous. I've had some extraordinary wow. catch ups wow. today, uh, really extraordinary. It blew my mind actually. So, yeah, people are very generous when you ask and when you're specific, I think. And when you are prepared to give and say, what can I do for you? How can I support you? You know, I think that's really important as well. Yeah, it's that point of reciprocity, isn't it? Reciprocity and abundance, two of my favourite words. Yeah, very much so. Too many people, I don't know what it is. I talk a lot about meeting someone as their equal. I think too many people either think, oh, my God, I just need to get this from you, and they don't actually think about, like, what they have to offer. Maybe that's... um, in psychology terms, I don't know, um, the, I don't know, lack of self worth or low sort of self esteem or something. So they kind of almost become this grabby. I need, I need, I need, and mm. it's probably not, but it's not very conscious often. Yeah, I like that. It's not very conscious. And you know, as you're speaking, this is reminding me of something that we do with our with our older youth. So um, around that phase where where kids are starting to think about, okay, well, what does life after school look like? And and are starting to think about, well, what's the equivalent of a coffee date? Back in the day, it was let's find a job on Seek and go down. Whereas we look at some of the design um, design your life activities like the informational interview, um, and and being really conscious about, okay, well, what is who is it that you're reaching out for specifically? What's your ask? But here's an opportunity to share, not necessarily what your achievements are. To your point of, is there that hi- hierarchy of, well, what do I bring to the table when I'm meeting somebody who I really admire? But what are your skills and your strengths? Your unique value proposition of yourself, if you like. You know, what are your interests and how how can you share that in a way that's vulnerable, authentic, um, and, and letting somebody see where you're genuinely at? Because adults love to see a young person exploring their identity and and giving some of themselves. Um, but I, I'm curious if that's also been your experience as an adult or how you might sort of start to think about coffee dates moving forward in a different way. Yeah, so I love everything that you're saying. And I feel like you know, there's no, um, I sort of, I'm quite, I don't like the idea of age because I feel mm. like so many of us have different things to bring at different times. I mean, yeah. you could use so many of, you know, the youth of people, you know, you meet them and they have this beautiful, like, um, untarnished, this, this wonder for the world. They're in yeah. awe excited they're passionate they want to explore they look at things differently so that I think we need to not underestimate even if they've not yet had you know life experience in terms of business and things they Mm. bring 
beauty that so many people who've you know had more years in life might be you know tarnished or oh I'm sick of this or it's the nine to five or it's the drudgery or you know that negativity or the victim mentality like mm -hmm. people necessarily don't work on themselves have time has let those things those nuances the sparkles creep. yeah, yeah. The sparkle die yeah I would love to think that every single human has the opportunity to bring something to someone else. And it's the same in business. You know, a lot of startups, they've, again, got that hunger and that passion. They don't necessarily yet have the business acumen, mm. but the you know, older, wiser um, people who've been around business for longer, again, you know, they have so much to learn about the newness. And so I think... Really, everyone who's listening, never underestimate what, you, as you say, your value proposition is, what you bring, because there's so much that everyone has to share. And you also said something around vulnerability. I actually just mm. came from a meeting um, at Soho House in Austin with a guy who someone was kind enough to introduce me to, and we kind of met, and he was instantly vulnerable and so I wow. instantly met him with vulnerability and it was a conversation around children and within I probably think three to four minutes my entire body had goosebumps and I was like oh wow, wow. because we both just dropped into this state and it gave us from never having met each other before and really know not, knowing nothing about each other and having very different backgrounds mm. um straight away dropped into this okay and this richness of conversation came out as a result so I think be unafraid to you know share and be authentic and vulnerable and then you'll find little threads of connection and you never yeah. know where that is you yeah yeah and I think coming at, at conversations and and moments in time with people from that place of of genuine connection to self and connection to experience and um, being open to share some of that is um is just such a beautiful and powerful way thank you for sharing that as an example I'm going to take that away personally and reflect on it and I hope our listeners do too <laughs> and so speaking of new meetings and speaking of all that you're doing and mentioning startups tell us a little bit about I know you've just filmed your your startup to scale up series and you've got the book talk us through what's going on for us all what can we expect <laughs> what's next well the, the, the thing is, and thank you for reading and buying so many of my books and magazines over the years, so you will, you will know well, most people become the guru of something and then they write a book about it retrospectively. But I always choose a topic and then I go, ah, oh, I'm going to you know, step into this, I'm going to seek, I'm going to learn everything and I'm going to write in real time on the journey. And so that's the space from which I love to write. You know, I come up with a topic, I learn, it just keeps me accountable and I have a really great, you know, fun journey doing it and then somehow that seems to resonate with people and what I hear a lot is people go, oh my gosh, you're just like me and it's only because I'm putting myself in situations all the time. My startup to scale up book is slightly different because for so many years, people have said to me, this is my 21st year of business, people have said, can wow. you put everything you've learned into one book? So it wasn't so much fun to write because it's like the opposite of what I normally do. As Reverse I said, process. I normally, yeah. yeah, I normally pick a topic and then I learn it and live it, yes. write about it. Whereas this is like I had to go back through like everything, like wow. how do you ideate you know, how do you come up with a minimal viable product? How do you get the funding? How do you set up, you know, the team? How do you get the culture right? How do you set up the mm -hmm. marketing, the branding, the financial side? So I've literally gone through 14 chapters of every single aspect of business. And because I wow. know how I learn and how many other, many, many other entrepreneurs learn is I wanted it to be really easily digestible and also um, everything to be actionable and able to be implemented because I can't stand reading something and then thinking, what do I do with it? So for every single chapter, I then extrapolated 10 very specific points. So then there's 140 specific takeaways. So if anyone wow. wants just a cheat sheet, they can just go to the end of each chapter and still have <laughs> like 140 things to be like, okay, if this is what I do. And then, yeah, so we've 
done the Startup Scale Up book and then we've just released a whole lot of extension products, the journal that goes with it so you can kind of write your own business plan and some affirmation cards. Uh, but then, yes, we are releasing for the first time ever my own six-week course which is basically for startups anyone with the spark of an idea and kind of me hand holding through for six weeks um so it's pre-recorded videos but very specific snackable here are the things you need to know and then i jump on um facebook lives throughout the week and really kind of hand hold as much as possible so i'm super excited about it it's been a long time coming and um yeah i'm really excited to take a lot of people on a journey and have that connection you know with more people and have that sense of community and yeah so that is that is my latest little venture <laughs> hey there i wanted to tell you about an exciting and innovative solution we've been designing to help solve this problem of how we best prepare the next gen for an ever-evolving world and future workforce that's going to demand a whole new set of skills and mindsets in order for them to thrive the POSIFY Academy is Australia's first student-led, evidence-based and curriculum-aligned wellbeing and career development platform, helping young people aged 10 to 14 uncover and deliver their unique potential. It's the first for Trilogy series that's helping young people move seamlessly and with confidence from education and into industry as they design a life and a career of impact. Teaching skills like communication, compassion, creativity, critical thinking, agility, curiosity, resilience, problem solving, all those human capability skills that we talk about here on this podcast and connecting them with a sense of purpose. To learn more, you can visit theposifygroup.com.au forward slash posify dash academy. Now back to the show. Well, Jen and I are definitely diving in, being a little startup to, well, not so little anymore, scale up ourselves and all of those little reminders of bite size to your point, those practical tips that you offer are just, just beautiful and, and so easy for people to get their hands on and, and to dive in and, and not be afraid, which I love and I want to come back to. But before I do, there's a couple of things that, that you mentioned that, that, um, that I just want to point to. And it's the reverse of the process because one of the things I've always admired about you, Lisa, is I've seen you as a future forecaster. And I don't know if other people have, have mentioned that about yourself, but every time you released a book, I was like, oh, she's picked it. She's picked it again. It's like the, the trend spotter before it's even a trend. And I'm really curious about your creative process around that because you, you likened it to, you know, that's where you find it's fun. You pick a topic and then you dive in. And I'm thinking in particular of, uh, I know Elizabeth Gilbert, you know, describes her own creative process as feeling like that she doesn't have ownership over over the messaging that really it's, it's available to all, but she, she'll have one drop and she'll take a hold and sees herself as a vessel. And and I'm just really curious for you in terms of that future forecasting. One, is it something that resonates or am I just, is that like a mass thing that's you know fantasizing? And two, if it does resonate, what's that experience like? Because I think from an innovation, from a creativity, and it goes back to the top of our conversation around, you know, just listening and just being curious and open to what's being presented, um, whether you see that as energetically or environmentally, paying attention to what's being spoken about, what's it like for you? Yeah, thank you. I don't think it's just a mad thing. Thank you. <laughs> it's um, so I think probably because I fail a lot, <laughs> so <laughs> I try a lot of things. Um, I have a lot of experiences. I think, but it is interesting because when I wrote kind of the first in the series, daring and disruptive, in mm. um, 2014. I mean, that's very much the feeling that I had then because I was starting the magazine I was entering as we said in the bio um, highly saturated industry that people said was dead or dying so mm. the energy that I had to draw on then was were well, the words that encapsulated it mm. for me were daring and disruptive and yeah. I that was sort of almost accidentally in its infancy then because after that I started seeing the word disruptive everywhere yeah, and everywhere I I remember almost feeling a bit like... Hang on, that was my word. Yeah. No, <laughs> that was my like, feeling. Oh. I was like, oh, that's kind of like everywhere now. But <laughs> I feel like, and I, I don't know if that was just a universal consciousness that was coming into me or whatever it was, but it was, um, I think back then people were becoming a bit more like, it, it just became a thing, like let's just push mm. the boundaries, fuck the status quo. I mean, mm, that's been totally. around for 
a long time in an entrepreneurial sense, but certainly that's what I felt. Mm. But then it was sort of, there are some other ones which are funny, like um, risk and resilience. I mean, I always seem to use alliteration. I don't know why I'm stuck on that. But <laughs> I wrote that in 2017 when I'd had sort of four years of, you know, everything being amazing, like the most extraordinary things. I call it being in flow. Everything just worked and just yeah. got big until it didn't. And um, 2017, I'd scaled too quickly and I didn't have the right systems and processes in place. And so I chose a topic, risk and resilience. Okay, I'm going to write this and I'm going to get myself out of this mess. And I get more and more into the mess as I was writing. And I thought, oh, this isn't how this is meant to end. But again, <laughs> those words, um, that book kind of almost gave a lot of people permission, I think, because there were a lot of female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. around the same time who were either hemorrhaging cash or, or in mm -hmm. fact, a lot of businesses that didn't feel any longer on purpose or, um, you know, the way that things were done, you know, traditional bricks and mortar businesses had become digitized and people were finding it difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think because I wrote that book and it was very raw. I think it almost gave people permission to also break things and remake things. And yeah. then what I did as a result of that was I decentralized my office. And um, ironically, that was in 2018, I wrote my book, Work From Wherever, which came out in 2019, which was about decentralizing an office, having a hybrid workspace, you know, like how to who use would have thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then COVID hit shortly yeah. after that book came out and it was like, oh my gosh. So Yes, the, the, yeah. I mean, I don't know why, but yes, I have sometimes managed to kind of be ahead of things. Exactly. Um, Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I mean, I'm very passionate and I do feel very deeply into things. I sort of, if mm. I could describe it, I'd say I synthesize. So I don't know if that resonates with you, but I yeah, feel like okay. I... Um, I draw on a lot of different modalities. I put myself mm. in purposefully counterintuitive situations. I explore mm. and all sorts of things, i.e. Mm. crawling through sweat lodges nude and, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not particularly religious, but if someone says come to church, I'll be like, yeah, I'll go to church. If someone says crawl through a sweat lodge nude, I'll go, I'll, you know, like I'll try a lot of different things. And I think in doing that, I almost synthesize it and pull it all in and then make it my own and so maybe probably my creative process is quite tapped into a lot of different things so I am energetically if you want to go a bit where we're feeling a lot and bring mm. it in so maybe that's why sometimes things that I bring out um, seem to hit at the right time yeah I love all of that and it's really reminding me I listened recently to Scott Barry Kaufman he was look, talking a lot about um his, the, so you will have heard me talk about it anybody who listens to this podcast I'm always referencing Scott at the psychology <laughs> podcast but he talks a lot about uh creativity and innovation and the creative mind and it's correlation with uh you know you the big five personality factors but openness to experience and you mm. know what you're describing now is is really being open to if acknowledging that that creativity Creativity really needs that that input um, in order to deliver that output and recognizing okay well what else is going on in the world around me and what experiences how can I you know switch on that that curiosity and the beginner's eye and the beginner's mind that we need to be able to see things differently in order to take a step back and maybe remove some of the filters that we would otherwise have and and contribute something new um, I really love the way that you've described that process I hope everybody else has taken their pen and paper and it makes me think about our kids to your point of th that we're born with that aren't we and then somehow we lose it <laughs> it just goes um, yeah. and I'm so and curious I'm, about that yeah and to your point I'm going to take us on another little spiral but I um I love the beginner's mind I mean I think it's just such a beautiful thing and I am um, 18 years ago my first sort of foray into positive psychology um was in 2004 and I did something called the Hoffman process which you wow. probably may yeah. may not know but not off but the Hoffman process and went in um as a very kind of broken human and mm. pretty much everything that could be a train smash was a train smash and so mm. that course which is a six and a half day you know immersive cathartic process covering a number of different modalities was had a very different and profound impact on me 
when I was a very different person just entering into my <clears throat> foray into, you know, therapies and positive psychology and mm. all of that kind of thing. And I went back and did it again in November last year, so um, nearly 18 years later. And um, my facilitator said that very thing. He said, come in with a beginner's mind because mm. you know, I'm a very different person to what I was then. Totally. And it was the best piece of advice the best recommendation because I went in and I just threw myself into it wow. every single aspect of it rather than which would have been easy to do you know judge or be like I know what's coming next mm. or oh this is so beneath me now or any of that yes yeah just like everything I just the whole time just held that go into this with the beginner's mind and I just loved it and mm. it was so fun but in a different way so I think at any given time, you know, and very much being in Austin at the moment in America, it's an, mm. it's a complete thing. I'm, I might be someone in Australia. I'm nobody here, so it's like yeah. beginner's mind. We're starting again. <laughs> yeah, and what beautiful opportunities that brings. And I love that you're pointing to that idea of revisiting previous work, and and mm. at a different transition points. Uh, and similar to you, I entered where I am now in my career in psychology, and then founding the Positify Group with Jen. You know, moving out of my own experience with post traumatic growth that came out of, of therapy, and then exploring the different modalities, and and I, I'm I'm going back and revisiting some of that stuff now because I think collectively, it, it's been another moment of of experiences of things that that really do map to trauma we've all had to really look at this existential question of well, why are we here and the idea that life can be taken away from us at any point in time and and what does that mean and you know revisiting some of those things um from where i am now versus where i was when i was you know an emerging adult is is really different and quite special i think to to almost reparent that part of myself and i'm not sure if that resonates with you in any way um but it also reminds me of, of some of the young people that i just have the privilege of working with because you know they're developing minds and and the opportunity to to share with them some different strategies that we weren't taught as kids um, around developing a healthy self-identity and sense of place in the world sense of awe sense of wonder I'm curious though Lisa given everything that you've learned both professionally and personally as you start to think of those things integrated what are some of those life lessons or critical skills that you think are just necessary for our young people as, as we're moving into this into this new era, this age of consciousness, if you like. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's such a, it's such a big thing, isn't it? And I'm just really starting to explore again, for me, mm. um, around our youth, there's been like a lot of signs throughout the years. And, um, and that's why I'm really starting to very much immerse myself in that space at the moment. I think so many things have changed since we were growing up. I mean, mm. the old cliches, but there was no social media. So, it, mm. you know, there was things that come with that. I think life was a much more simple simple way of being in a way, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. We were certainly, I mean, it really wasn't until my late 20s that I had any semblance of who I was at all or I started yeah. doing work on myself. Yeah. And hopefully now that, you know, it is being talked about um and that you know there are so many more beautiful conversations coming about now hopefully it will become more and more and more acceptable to be vulnerable and authentic and to mm. seek ther therapy and to you know seek and identify however you want to and explore mm. like, i think there's a beauty in all of that um and hopefully the education system is changing substantially I mean um, you know when I was at school it was very convergent it was this is how you learnt and this was the only way and as a result I was always in trouble because I was always asking but how but how but why but why and ironically <laughs> that's the thing now that you know holds me instead so you know be unafraid to question things and have, mm. find a voice and not just follow things you know I think we need to be much more fluid in terms of how we educate and open and all that kind of thing. And I'm really just in the infancy of that. I mean, we are, we've done a soft launch of Collective Hub Kids, but in November 2022, we'll be bringing out the first kind of product line. But I'm working with um, the Positive Schools Association and some oh, amazing, amazing. Ed 
educators and Anne Johnson and Kate Barbet from Ravenswood and some other schools really informing a lot of my decisions and I'm really checking in on the you know the, the academia and the rigor associated with all of this to make sure that you know it all lands as it should and yes yeah, and, and again it's a real phase of trying to start to educate myself and find out well who who are the experts you know like Martin Seligman and his perma model and all of that stuff I'm starting to explore and I'm loving um, but certainly I need to you know, get myself much more up to speed on all of that. But yeah. Can I offer a yes and? <laughs> yes, 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 yes and. Can. Please <laughs> bring that business acumen because, yes, I mean, you know we stand for positive psychology, but I think what we're also noticing the kids are just so thirsty for, and to your point of that fluidity, is that there's becoming a blurring, I think, if I was going to future forecast myself, or, or a need, maybe a desire, to, to look at education instead of that, you know, K-12 model, and then we go and we get our university degree and off we go into business. You know, kids are really disrupting yeah. that, and they don't need our permission anymore. Um, I mean, I've spoken on this podcast a few, a few times I've got a couple of neurodiverse kids my 16 year old is currently studying at university running her own business working down at the local pizza shop you know that that was just unheard of and probably still is but I think where where I see what the collective hub offered me as a, as a young growing adult and into then entrepreneurship and where I can see a gap for kids is learning the financial literacy, you know, the, what it is to ideate, what it is to have a big idea and then, and move that. And I love the idea of that coming together with positive psychology. Um, but to our earlier point of not underestimating what you bring to the table, <laughs> Seligman's got this this positive psychology thing covered for us all, you know, and we're all we're all riding on the t- coattails of that. But, but yeah, we don't yet have Lisa Messenger's collective hub messages, uh, uh. so I'm I'm really excited about that for my kids, selfishly, and and for the youth moving forward. So talk to me about some of those future skills that you see in business um, being really desirable as we start to wrap up and reimagine, you know, that education space. How you can see that opportunity. So I love this and I'll just talk to quickly the little signs because I think people should listen to signs as they go. So in for my first book um, that I ever wrote was called Happiness Is and it was, um, I actually supported Kids Helpline. So that was kind of my first thing with kids. And then with the magazine, which you may have experienced as well, I had so many parents, um, Mm. you know, writing to me or speaking to me across every platform saying, oh my gosh, you know, my teenage daughter, this magazine has shown her that there's like so many different opportunities. She could be a coder in yeah. Berlin, she could do this or, yes. you know, because we removed a lot of the geographic barriers or the, mm-hmm. you know, all racial or, you know, all sorts of things. We lifted the lid off and just went, you know, let's create this kind of equality throughout. Um, mm. And that's always about diversity and inclusion and all of that kind of thing that's now also being talked about Mm -hmm. and then when we started bringing out affirmation cards and gratitude journals and things like that we had so many people saying oh my son has read this or my daughter's done this or someone pulled a card and so there's been a long time in our community these you know murmurings of we need this stuff and then when I started talking to some of the academics and the people in psychology and I realized that a lot of it is the academia and the rigor but not necessarily with the magic um, that we can package it up. So that's something I'm super passionate about. Um, Something next year that I'm really passionate about doing is um, bringing out a whole to your point about you know kids or teenagers and business is bringing out a whole series around potential careers and how they would actually because there's not much out there I've scoured Mm. the globe what are all the you know jobs that are potentially coming what are the things that have not even been imagined what are the possibilities and some of the pathways who are some of the icons that have you know already taken that path you know what are some of the learnings what are some of the attributes that you might possess already to be you know potentially good at that role so I'm really looking forward to kind of bringing that out and really helping kids to understand the possibility rather than you know societal norms or other people's expectations of them and steering them in a direction that they're not yet able to realize that that's someone else's you know, wishes for them. So, yeah, I'm excited about 
I guess, yeah, opening them up to possibility and really believing in themselves and creating. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's see. And we are so united on that. I mean, everything that we're doing with Posify is looking at that idea of building those career aspirations. But, you know, to your point, doing it from that place of, of, of untapped potential. You know, what is that from within? And then rather than looking at that idea of, well, what's the job I want to go for? It's We ask the question, well, what's the impact I want to create? And then, you know, what's my next best step to make that happen and and I love that you're bringing in this idea of well, who are the people that we can look to who because I think that kids just really need those markers or they benefit from those markers of saying oh this person did it that way and this person did it that way um, you know brings me back to our conversation about coffee catch-ups informational interviews um, but yeah the ability to showcase you as an example to, to our audience and to our young people listening as well um, really go check out Lisa's work and, and keep in touch with her speaking of which I mean I know how to keep in touch with you obviously but please share with our listeners <laughs> where are they going to continue the conversation with you how can they find you Lisa because there has been so many little golden nuggets I know people are going to want to follow up on uh, so um, Lisa Messenger and or Collective Hub on most social channels um, I answer all my own DMs on my Instagram which is Lisa Messenger so yeah follow along but I feel like you and I I feel like this has been like the perfect coffee date and I feel like <laughs> so much synchronicity and I'm like oh we need to do something together more. oh yeah I, I've got a million ideas bubbling as well <laughs> so we might have to leave that dangling carrot for our listeners actually and then you and I jump off and blah, 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 in the background oh, I'm very oh, very yeah. excited absolutely oh thank you Lisa listen before I let you go for our listeners um I wonder if you could have a magic wish so I've given you a magic wand today and really wave that wand to reimagine our future of either or both uh, learning education um, work and leadership what's one wish that you would have for our world to leave our listeners with Ooh, well <laughs> I think I think it's really about being courageous enough to understand what makes you you and mm. then you know shining a light on that being unafraid to bring your whole self to the world and I feel like you know when we lead with love um, rather than fear and we let ourselves shine then truly anything is possible oh I love that I'm hearing connect within to connect with yeah. other and then create a love thank you yeah. so much <laughs> Thank That's you for all we have time for today on Classroom 5.0. And as always, I will have links to Lisa's work and everything that we've mentioned, the resources, her beautiful books, uh, some of the books I've mentioned as well in our show notes. Do be sure to jump in, of course, to our episode page where you'll find not only our podcast, but our YouTube version of today's episode and all the links. That's enough from me. And we'll see you later, alligators. Classroom 5.0 is brought to you by the Posify Group a socially conscious education company arming the next gen with a sense of purpose and the future skills they'll need to thrive in this ever evolving world. Your ratings and reviews really mean the world to us. So if you loved this episode, do let us know and share it with a friend. We'd like to say thanks to our editing guru, Clint Rant and his team at My Video Producer, who helped us put this show together. And for today's show notes, links, and more episodes just like these, you can visit theposifygroup.com.au forward slash podcast. Thanks for helping us imagine alive the future of learning. See you next time.